we'll uh, we'll find out more things about uh, this uh, this uh, important artist and designer and architect and also um just a second um, Okay, do you see the, the screen with Eileen Gray, the PowerPoint presentation? Yes. Okay. Don't so, forget to record. Uh, yeah, yes, I, I, I clicked on that <laughs> magical uh, button. Okay. So Eileen Gray, I think is interesting uh, in this case a little bit that chronology. She was nine years older than Le Corbusier and 15 years older than Jean Badovic. So she was born in 1878, Le Corbusier was born in 1887, and Jean Badovic was born in uh, 1893. Uh, there is a film about the three of them, which is called The, the, the Price of Desire. Uh, I think it's made by, I don't know, HBO or Hollywood. Uh, it's a commercial. Uh, it's a commercial film, but um, it's interesting that they made it. I mean, these three characters, Eileen Gray, Jean Badovic, and Le Corbusier, became interesting as a subject to, you know, uh, Hollywood or HBO. I don't know exactly, but connected with, with, with Hollywood. And um, I, I know there is a, a version of this film, but I think it's uh, with uh, subtitles in, uh, in in Russian or in, well, it was made, I think, the language in French. Uh, and uh, the only one I found was with uh, subtitles in, in Russian, I think. But maybe you are lucky if you are interested to see, you know, this kind of film. So Eileen Gray was born in Ireland and um, her father was a, a, a landscape painter. And uh, from her mother, I think she, uh, she had connections with uh, the British aristocracy. And uh, um, then uh, her parents uh, divorced. And essentially, later in life, she said, I have no roots, no roots. But if I am to have somewhere roots, those would be in, in Ireland. But he, she lived for most of her life in, in France. And she had a very long life. Uh, she lived over 90, uh, close to 100 uh, almost. Uh, she was bisexual. And uh, apparently Jean Badovic was uh, almost an exception in her erotic life. Uh, an interesting woman. Uh, and uh, anyway, let's see a few pictures of her. But what, why is strange? Um, there was another picture, I don't know why it doesn't show up here. Anyway, sorry. Um, this is in her 90s uh, in France. This is how time changes uh, one's, uh, one's appearance, but she was still alert uh, until, until her death and, and uh, you know, still creative. And now I'll show you some drawings um, and paintings. She learned architecture by herself. Uh, Jean helped her a little bit and, you know, they traveled and the, but, but she never went to an architecture school. But she was already, I mean, she began to, um, you know, she studied with a Japanese man, uh, certain techniques of lacquer and and and, and they uh, she, she became a well-known designer in Paris but in architecture she had no training so these are some of her drawings and uh, some paintings for graphic arts So she did this, you know, uh, almost 100 years ago. So, you know, she's considered, uh, you know, almost a pioneer of modern art and modern architecture. Uh, 
I guess she did also photography or sculpture. And this was her, you know, working table. Nice. Um, so architecture. Now, when we have to, to talk about architecture, we have to talk about this villa. This villa, which uh, is cryptical even in its name. Uh, this is a scene from the movie, that movie that I told you about on the left is uh, supposed to be, although I'm a little bit confused here because uh, I, I saw a video, or unless it's the same actor who played Le Corbusier, an Irish actor, I think, uh, who, you know, uh, is, was responsible with um, restoring the building. And uh, there the, are two films. Pardon? Two films. There are two films, two movies. There are two movies? The, I only the, knew of one. Yes. The last one is in uh, 20 Domicinspa. Yeah, I, I, I knew only of the price of desire, but anyway. Now, uh, Jean Badovic is, uh, <laughs> is a little bit uh, different in the film than in reality. I mean, considering the pictures, we are going to see a picture, of, uh, so several pictures with Jean Badovic, but uh, he doesn't look in those pictures like this uh, handsome man here. But he does look like an interesting man. Anyway, where does the name of the, of the, of the villa come from? E, e comes from Eileen. One zero, meaning 10, is the, the tenth letter in the alphabet, J for Jean, and then two stands for Badovic, so letter B, and then number seven stands for G, which is from Gray. So if we are to translate the naming of the villa, Eileen, Jean, Badovic, Gray. And the commentator say that it's a, it was her way of, uh, you know, uh, implying uh, in the in the name of the villa their relationship. You know, but uh, you know she's containing Jean Badovic, so Jean Badovic is in between E and seven, meaning between Eileen and and Greg. Anyway, a little bit of eroticism there. They were lovers, so what what do you expect? Not so young, actually. I think uh, at that time, so let's see, uh, she was born in 1878. This was uh, done in 1926. So 26 plus 22, she was close to 50, um, maybe even more, let's say 29. Yeah, she was around 50 and he was 35 uh, years old, uh, 15, uh, 15 years younger than her. So you see, it was built between 1926 and 1929 in uh, Roque-Brune uh, Cap Martin, Cap Martin in France, uh, where also Le Corbusier built his uh, Le Cabanon. A very beautiful place. Uh, and uh, so the name of the house, as I said, E1027, is a code for Eileen Gray and Jean Badovic. E standing for Eileen, 10 for Jean, 2 for Badovic, 7 for Gray. The encoded name was Eileen Gray's way of showing their relationship as lovers at the time when built. And you see the map here, uh, this, uh, the location of the house is where is this uh, imperfect little red dot, you know, uh, right uh, the edge of, uh, of, of the land and, and of the sea. That's where, that's where Le Corbusier actually loved to return for the last uh, almost 10 years of his life and where this villa was and is located. It was restored a few years ago, but it still, sh after the restoration, sh continues to show signs of deterioration. So this is the villa. I actually, to be honest with you, she tried to apply the five, uh, you know, dogmas or rules of uh, Le Corbusier. Uh, I actually find her villa more human or humane and warmer and uh, in, 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 in less contrived than, than Villa Savoie. Uh, 
and it's not a big house. You know, it has like, I mean, it's not huge. It's, it has like 140 square meters, adding both floors. What you see above the building here in this area, this was built, and I think after the death of Le Corbusier, but I'm not sure because this I just discovered. These were done by Le Corbusier, kind of like a little, you know, little units to be rented for those who wanted to be in the proximity of the Mediterranean Sea. And here it is the restaurant that provided food for uh, Le Cabanon, where the master uh, Le Corbusier lived. I mean, lived uh, some months of the year. And we'll talk about that in, in more detail. But, but the house is, uh, uh, I, I understand why, why it's considered uh, a masterpiece of uh, modern architecture. Considering when it was built in 1926, it, 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 it's not built so well, but uh, it has the, the, the fresh language of orthodox modernity and the spontaneity, which, uh, you know, I think the buildings of Le Corbusier kind of do not have. The, the exact relationship between Le Corbusier and, and Eileen Gray and this house I do not comprehend very well at this point. Uh, Beatrice Colomina wrote uh, in Freudian terms, why did he feel, uh, you know, I mean, he was an architect. He was supposed to respect the work of another architect. Why did he, you know, as, 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 as it was named, why did he vandalize it? But, but Le Corbusier was a, was, a, was a complicated man. And I, I think he had a dark side that maybe even himself was not aware of. And, and, and uh, it was shown in his uh, erotical drawings and uh, in his letters towards his mother. So I, I think here was a truly a, a complex relationship between him, between Eileen Gray and Jean Badovich. He was friends with Badovich. He painted a, you know, a so-called fresco on one of the walls of the villa called Three Women but actually he depicted Jan Badovich and, and Eileen Gray, and may, I don't know, maybe the third so-called woman was himself. Why would he call it three women when in fact, those who studied the painting said, here is Jan Badovich uh, and, and Eileen Gray, and there is another person. There, there is a mystery here in a way, you know, and I, I, I think Beatrice Colomina had the intuition that this is a material, and perhaps it's interesting to search for her, and it's possible probably to find this text on the web. So you just uh, type in Beatrice with a Z at the end, Beatrice Colomina, Colomina, and uh, she's a professor at Princeton. I actually thought of inviting her, but I, I'm maybe next year on the 9th of August when I am better prepared and uh, in better shape at all levels. Um, anyway, so um, we will uh, look through certain details and pictures of this house. Uh, again, it's not a big house, but uh, it's uh, personally I like it more than Villa Savoie. Villa Sa and what is interesting about this villa is that um, Eileen Gray thought that furniture makes architecture. And it's, I know this is controversial, you know, but I think uh, at least sometimes architects uh, neglect the role of other things besides space. And of course, the, the other things are important. You know, you could have the same space, but with very different furniture or, uh, you know, different arrangements and, and you get a different feeling. So obviously architecture is not just about space. Because, you know, life needs other things besides space. And um, anyway, um, right now, what is very interesting, this whole site is, uh, is um, you know, uh, it received a, a title of nobility, even from UNESCO, in fact, Le Cabanon by Le Corbusier, which is just behind this. This villa is the smallest UNESCO site. Of course it's the smallest because it's only 16 square meters. And um, 
today I found out that it is a UNESCO, you know, uh, site, uh, you know, part of the, you know, the cultural heritage, and you know, it's it's sacred from now on. So the building is also kind of like a ship, you know, uh, uh, you know, a ship landing, uh, landed on the land. Uh, and, and, you know, the, the Corbusier himself had a fascination with ships and boats. Although what you perhaps do not know is that he suffered a terrible accident uh, when, a, when a boat went over him uh, when he was 50. And we will we'll arrive at the uh, when I talk about uh, a little a little later in this presentation. Uh, miraculously, he didn't die then. But you see, even the plan of the house has, has small small deviations from a you know strict uh, system structural. It's it it has a certain. Uh, uh, I would say sensitivity that that um, uh, you know makes me even think a little bit of Alvar Aalto. So, and you can tell that the the the, the pieces of furniture as they appear on the plan, uh, you know, they they have an almost lyrical quality. They are placed in a certain way, but 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 it's not a strict function functionalist. I think there is a certain vulnerability, a certain fragility here that is probably the feminine side that, that makes the building um, you know, less, less dogmatic, uh, less of a manifesto, but exactly because of it, you know, like, look, this, this wall here is, is not perfectly parallel with this one. And uh, you know, just slightly accommodates an entrance from here, and it's it's, it's very subtle and, and and very appropriate. So th there are uh, there are nice things here, um, you know, that that actually Le Corbusier didn't quite have uh, with with the same some subtlety in his buildings. And in this part, it's almost you know, if if we are to judge it just for its. Uh, you know, uh, you know, it's quality, graphically expressed. It's, it's almost like a fragment of a building by Wright. Although she applied the, the, you know, the five points of the Corbusier almost religiously. But what she got is not, was not something dogmatic. She modified uh, the dogma uh, in, in, in relation with her feelings and her thoughts. And she was a strong woman, and uh, you know uh, she was not afraid to 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 express uh, you know her thoughts and her feelings uh, accordingly. She was also very generous. I mean, people say you know she she gave this house to Jean. She could have I don't know uh, she could have done maybe something else. She she simply made him the owner of this uh, important building. But apparently the building was uh, abandoned, maybe even by him, and it was on the verge of uh, being very, very, um, you know, uh, in, in very, very bad shape. I mean, I even the section, you know, it, it's, it, of course the, the land requires, uh, you know, kind of an organic um, connection with it, but, uh, you can tell this is a, a, a different kind of architect than, than Le Corbusier. Now, so this is uh, Villa E1027, and what you see here on the right, this little, you know, cubicle, is the office, so-called office of Le Corbusier, which in my estimation is, was about two meters by three meters, or two meters something, maybe let's say two meters 40 by whatever, let's make it four or 480. Anyway, it's, it's, it's probably was probably the smallest uh, architecture office uh, ever, ever built uh, by an architect, doesn't matter his fame. And here we are dealing with Le Corbusier. 
the Le Cabanon was a little bit on the left. And uh, so he had the so-called office and we are going to see him in his office with a, with a window that you wouldn't believe uh, was used by Le Corbusier because it was not the horizontal window that we all know about, but the grandma window vertical and divided in smaller uh, squares. Um, I invited today uh, an interesting young Romanian architect uh, who finished uh, her studies at the, the Faculty of Interior, uh, Patricia Erimescu, who at 25 or so went to Africa and with bare hands, would be without a, the right of signature or anything, uh, she built a library in Africa, uh, incredible. I found out it by uh, accident on one of these major um, you know, websites, the Zine or uh, Arch Daily, or I don't know which one. And uh, why am I mentioning Patricia Erimescu? Because I talked to her about this villa by Eileen Gray, and, and, she's, and that behind it, it was the Le Cabanon by Le Corbusier. And she told me like two years ago, she said, yeah, Le Corbusier wanted to keep an eye on Eileen Gray. But actually, and this I found out only today, he built a Cabanon in 1951. That is 20 years after this building was, was uh, 22 years after this building was built and, and Eileen Gray was not any longer here. So it's a complicated, uh, or maybe not so complicated story, but uh, being that, you know, very rarely we, we associate you know, famous buildings with, uh, with the biographies of their authors. You know, in this case, you know, we have uh, two famous architects, Le Corbusier and Eileen Gray. We have a famous building, uh, E1027. We have another very famous uh, little building called Le Cabanon. And we have the in intertwining of, of their lives. So this is interesting that, that, that that it's not just architecture by itself, but it is architecture connected with life and with the specifics and accidents and complexities of life. And uh, I, I actually think in this case, we have more things to say about buildings. And today I just couldn't stop downloading pictures with, uh, with a house. It, although it's a small house and you know, you can see every room very, very quickly, Somehow it ref refuses to be exhausted. Uh, and uh, and uh, I think this is a, a great quality of the building. Um, you know, because it appears like a simple building, but, but as I said, I, I was continuously uh, not at the end of the road, searching for more pictures and more pictures, and I continuously discovered something new. So uh, apparently Eileen Gray, she's, you know, the, the author of the building, but, but, but even Jean Badovich was, was um, present in the process of designing the building and being that they were lovers, they even lived here for a year or two. Uh, and then he was an architect who studied architecture and she was learning by herself and with his help a little bit. So, I think in, in a certain way, this is a building uh, that was done by both. But uh, the truth is what he built by himself is um, what I saw. I just saw some buildings built by him in a, in a city of France. They are very in, less interesting, those works, than, uh, than, than this villa. So it's possible in, 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 in good measure in terms of authorship or design is, uh, is it's rather her, her work and not his. And what is, you, you can almost tell looking at the plan that, that somehow the arrangement of the furniture and the pieces of furniture and the accessories, they generate the plan. You know, usually when we do a house, we start from the, from the big towards the small. But here you have the feeling that somehow, you know, it's the other way around. 
And maybe this is an interesting way to, to, to do architecture, where you do not start with a, you know, the configuration of the walls and then the rooms, and then you begin to, you know, at the end to place, uh, no, you start the opposite, with the objects, with objects, with a sink, with a, you know, bathtub, with a toilet, with a, um, you know, uh, something to hang clothes from or on, with a bed, and then from these uh, things that are not architectural, slowly to, to uh, create the building, kind of starting with them. And I, I, I think she did so being mainly because she was a designer. And you can tell from the plan, it, 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 it is in a little bit uh, different than, uh, a little bit different than, um, you know, other, other, other plans of, of famous houses. Now, this is the building behind, which was built by Le Corbusier, but I don't know if it was built during his life, lifetime. I think there was an arrangement between the man who allowed him to build the cabanon near his restaurant, and either Le Corbusier didn't have all the money, so then he paid with uh, allowing the, the owner of the restaurant to build these five units, uh, you know, to rent them. Kind, kind of a, like a little motel. But, but if you compare it with uh, the building by Eileen Gray, this is kind of uh, predictably, you know, repetitive and uh, even a little bit rigid. Back to the E1027 house. Um, I mean, looking at this living room, I am asking, could you start a, a building uh, designing a building from the rug in the, in the living room, for example, you, you simply begin to design a building by first envisioning a certain kind of rug, you know. It, it's just a thought I had now, but, but why not? Anyway, um, she said so, or I found this expression uh, in relation with her work, furniture makes the room. And now you'll see photos by this uh, photographer, Mary Godin, Marie Godin, or Mary, yeah, Mary Godin. Um, after the, the building was restored, even this chair was, was designed by, by Eileen Gray. There you see the, the gift of Le Corbusier, an unrequired, uh, uh, an unwanted actually gift. That, that chair is also by Eileen Gray, armchair. Now the sink is probably not, uh, it was probably not designed by her, it was just purchased, you know, it's a type of sink that was used before the Second World War. Um, but the landscape is splendid, so, you know, um, although you can build a terrible building uh, in, in the most beautiful landscape, uh, the landscape doesn't, necessarily save the, save the building. Le Corbusier actually died in the proximity of this house. He, was die, he died at 78, swimming towards south in the Mediterranean Sea, right in front of uh, this building and in front of uh, his, uh, Le Cabanon. This is an interesting construction, just uh, steel and glass, you know, that arrives on the terrace of the building. Uh, the culmination of the spiral stair. And here we see uh, in this picture on the left, Le Corbusier, in the middle, Yvonne, his wife, and on the right, Jean Badovic. 
uh, while they drank. <laughs> Maybe Jean Badovic more than the other two. Uh, so Jean Badovic was uh, six years uh, younger than Le Corbusier. But he was a big promoter of Le Corbusier. And they were here uh, in, in, in this location. I don't think, though, that Eileen Gray took the picture now. But who knows? Maybe. Um, I never found out about this, but it's possible. I, anyway, someone took the picture, not one of the, of the three. And here they are, the lovers. On the left, uh, Eileen Gray. On the right, Jean Badovic, born and raised in Bucharest. And uh, he studied architecture in Paris. And uh, uh, he became a promoter, uh, uh, an intense promoter of avant-garde architecture. He published his own magazine called Architect Architecture Vivante, meaning uh, living architecture. And uh, um, he collaborated with a famous uh, publisher. So they published extensively works by Le Corbusier. They published this uh, house by, uh, by uh, Eileen Gray. <laughs> she doesn't look 15 years younger, uh, older than him. In fact, he looks 15 years older than her. I don't know. Maybe I, I see things uh, in a distorted way. Or the pictures were not uh, taken at the same time. That is also possible. 1939. So in 1939, seven years after Eileen Gray and Jean Badovic broke up. So again, and 10 years after the building of the building ended, so it was completed in 1929. So 10 years later, you'll see this, Le Corbusier naked, uh, uh, vandalizing the wall of this house. And, you know, the first question, why was he naked? I mean, you know, <laughs> really, he couldn't paint unless he dropped uh, everything. Uh, uh, you can see on, on the right leg, uh, Terrible big scar, and I will arrive at the story about that because it's an interesting uh, story, uh, almost uh, surreally interesting. So this is a man at 50, a famous architect, who allowed himself to be photographed by someone, maybe Badovic, I don't know, because at that time, Eileen Gray was not there any longer. Eileen Gray uh, left. Uh, she broke up with Padovic in 1932. This is 1939. So seven years later. You can see on this uh, you know, website, uh, you can see uh, an article about the Corbusier's scar on that right leg. But I have here a fragment of a letter he wrote to his mother about it. What happened was he was swimming at 50 when apparently a boat went over him. And um, uh, how do you call them? Um, ah, I should have a search in the dictionary. Elija in Romanian. Elija, the, the rotating part of the, of the, the engine that uh, you know, propelled the, the boat. Uh, uh, almost cut off his, uh, his leg. And look, at it was a huge uh, scar. And uh, I, from what I read, it was a, a great luck that the cut was longitudi longitudinal and not uh, uh, transversal. And uh, uh, because of it, uh, the veins were not cut. And uh, so, yeah, he lost a lot of blood. He spent a month or two or three in the hospital but he survived. And this is what he wrote to his mother because he was a good boy who adored his, his mother. So he would write to his mother just like a schoolboy. I'm talking about Le Corbusier. So this is what he wrote about this accident which happened in front of uh, the villa, E1027. After the first turn of the blades, the blades, I was thrown out of the circuit and seemed not to have been hurt. I reached the surface and breathed air. I hadn't swallowed a drop of water. I saw the boat gliding slowly away. I shouted, hey, wait a second. You went right over me. There may be some damage. Quite automatically, my hand went to my right thigh 
my arm fitting nicely inside. I looked down, a big area of blood red water and half my thigh floating like a ray, a fish attached by a narrow strip of flesh. Throw me a boy, I'm badly hurt. The yacht headed towards me, throwing me a sort of rope, not too big to be held in one hand. The side of the yacht was too high for anyone to help me. Throw a lifesaver. It comes and I sit inside it. And here are some fishermen coming into port. The boat is low, they hold out their hands and I give them my left hand because I'm holding my thigh together with my right. We reach the place I started from on the breakwater. I get up on the jetty, a kind driver appears out of nowhere and helps me sit down beside him. The fisherman gets in the back seat, hospital. They put me on the table and begin swinging swing me together. This lasts from six to midnight in two sessions. I've already told you the rest. So this is a fragment of a letter he wrote to his mother. I, I didn't copy the whole text about it, but you can, you can see it on the... Now here you see Le Corbusier, um, uh, you know, laying on the bed uh, in, inside the villa. You can tell he seems very comfortable. Uh, it's very possible at that time it was just him and uh, Jean Badovic, but he feels at home in that villa and it was not his villa. This is a scene from one of the movies. I didn't know there were two movies, but one of the movies on the left, Le Corbusier, who was fond of Espadrilles, as you can see. Uh, <laughs> and on the right, uh, more introverted, uh, Jean Badovic. Now, Eileen Gray as a designer. Um, this is a scene from the movie. I like the shoes. I imagine Eileen Gray kind of wore something similar uh, uh, in, in, in her time. Uh, but this is the actress that played Eileen Gray uh, sitting on a chair by Eileen Gray. Maybe it would be interesting for amusement to see this, uh, this movie. Uh, this is her herself. Um, and, uh, you know, the chair she designed and the screen that she designed. And this is a picture, I don't see very well what's going on, the, on there, but I imagine it's, uh, it's her in her older age. And uh, a sofa or a bed. Um, you can tell she was quite a good designer. And, uh, you know, a picture from an exhibition with the works of Eileen Gray. Uh, and with one of her chairs and uh, the armchair designed by Eileen Gray. Nice chair. Uh, I know one of them, maybe this one uh, was, was bought, the original one, the first one probably was bought with the, the largest amount of money ever paid for a, um, for a chair by Yves Saint Laurent. Like, uh, I forgot either two millions or 20 millions at that level. It, of course, it's a huge difference between two and 20, but uh, both, both numbers are, uh, are real for me. Uh, another chair by her, excellent. I, I, I think it's, it's, it's very well designed. Uh, so, um, you know, she deserves to be uh, on the list with uh, the important designers and, and, and architects and artists of the 20th century. And the way she combines metal with wood uh, is, is, is remarkable because it's not so easy actually. Um, another piece of furniture by her. And here she is in her 90s in France, um, alone probably. Jean Badovic died a long time ago. Jean Badovic died at 63 and she lived to be over 90, close to 100. And this is the last picture of, of the presentation on her, her own gallery in Paris through which she promoted her own designs, the furniture designs and so on. And now I will show you um, a material about Le Cabanon. 
because the two buildings are uh, you know, united by fate and uh, and uh, you know I, I have a material uh, prepared although there was another one that I prepared but that one I couldn't find but this one is rich enough so um, Le Cabanon Le Cabanon which is a, a, a little house he built in 1951 so it was built um, you know 22 years after 22 years after the villa E1027 uh, was was completed and of course after the second world war here is le corbusier working for chandigar and you see the the sketches uh, for chandigar on the walls and uh, <laughs> you know at first you might think, you know, am I dreaming? How come Le Corbusier has some, this kind of window? Well, <laughs> he does because you will see his office, you know, uh, he changed, he changed uh, dramatically. Gun is the dogma, gun is the, you know, the horizontal uh, window. Here we have a different kind of man and different kind of aesthetics. And I think he loved solitude and he loved to, you know, he, he, he was himself here in, in maybe in the, the most genuine sense. Now some images of this little house. Look at the chairs he had. They're actually boxes, wooden boxes. Um, right now it's, you know, cleaned up. But when he lived there, it was a little bit more, uh, you know, alive and also a little bit more disordered. It's very well crafted, and in fact, you know, I should know more about it. Uh, there are all kinds of uh, scholarly works about this uh, this uh, small uh, habitation, you know, uh, all kinds of specu speculative, even philosophical, you know, like here you see the, the building is very small, you know, like 16 square meters. What you see here, the door at number two, is the door that went into the restaurant. So he got food from the restaurant. So the house is, 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 is glued to the, attached to the restaurant. And he had two bed, he had room for two beds, number nine and number seven, one for himself, one for his wife. But for a number of years, I think his wife came with him and then I think she died before him. So she would she would come he would come here alone and this this bed uh, disappeared from here it wasn't really a bed a, a wooden platform on on which maybe they they placed a, a mattress and uh, you know everything opened the sink and and, and the toilet and uh, you know a, a min, minimal uh, house but i admire very much this house because i think uh, at a time like ours you know, where we talk a lot about sustainability, I think this building, for me, this building is more relevant than Villa Savoie. Villa Savoie leaves me, leaves, leaves me cold. It's not for me, it's for some distant abstract um, aristocrats. It's not even meant to be lived in really. But this one, you know, in fact, unfortunately, Le Corbusier wanted to multiply this and this is the naivete and also the vanity of many architects. Once they discover something or they do something, they want to cover the whole earth with that something. So he wanted to produce this Le Cabanon, uh, you know, uh, for, for mass production. And uh, it's a good thing he didn't, I think. Anyway, um, here, the, <laughs> here, the, here it is, you know, Le Cabanon, the Rock Brune. Uh, no, anyway, it says here 1952, maybe it was finished in 1952. Can you imagine Le Corbusier, who at that time was uh, 65 years old, we are talking about the giant of modern architecture, doing at 65 such a project, try to imagine uh, a diploma in a university today after six years of, you know, long years of study, Doing a diploma with such a work, of course it would fail. They would say, you are joking. This cannot be a diploma. This is done by, a, if not a kindergarten child, by a student in the first year, but, but certainly not in the second. 
Well, how do you explain that Le Corbusier did it at 65 after he built most of his oeuvre? So what is this telling me? That, that uh, you know, uh, quality has nothing to do with quantity and that, uh, you know, you, you can, you can express your vision in architecture with very modest means and at a very small scale. And you can still do great architecture. And I actually think this is great architecture. It's maybe for a Robinson Crusoe, it's maybe for a, you know, a Jean Jacques Rousseau's dreamer. I don't know, but expresses something of Le Corbusier that I think is very, very appropriate for our time. And uh, we saw the plan already. Uh, so the entrance is from here. And uh, yeah, this is the connection with the restaurant and we talked about it, the other things. Here you have the two boxes that are meant to, I mean, you know, they, they are meant as chairs and the desk of the master, uh, of the great architect. And, uh, uh, but, but, but you see, there are some sophistications here, you know, and the, the PhD students or the doctors already would spend years just uh, trying to find some significance in this. Uh, it's not the golden rectangle, it's not. But we, we do see a square and we do see some kind of a rotation here uh, of, of uh, four rectangles and something there in the middle that is, you know, uh, we can write a few books about. Essentially, this is the building. Look at this. <laughs> I would gladly, I would love to see a diploma work after not six, but 60 years of study, exactly like when he, you know, like he had when he did it. That looks like this and say, you know, this is my, this is the sum of my work. Because why not? To arrive at this kind of simplicity and modesty, you have to go through life and learn a lot and live a lot. Uh, as Picasso said, uh, you know, it takes a long time to become young. Well, for uh, Le Corbusier, I also think it took him a long time to become young. In other words, to, to, to envision something like this. And look at, look at the elevation. It's the primal, most, most primal kind of habitation, in, in the most naive in a way, most innocent, but was done by one of the most sophisticated architects of the 20th century. I think this is beautiful. Now, of course, there are foundations now and all kinds of organizations that, you know, sell trips, not now with the pandemic, but, uh, you know, when the pandemic was not there, here is the master with a, with a dog and then a view of the, of, the, of the building that I continue to think is more relevant than Villa Savoie. And even more relevant than the building is the beautiful tree, the trunk of the tree close to it. I think we need badly trees, trees, trees. Never, never, never cut a tree down. Never. This is not a time to cut down trees. Uh, nor grass for that matter, nor bushes. Now this is a digital, uh, you know, uh, representation of, of, of the interior of the great building. He was a little bit of a masochist, Le Corbusier, no doubt. His own little office on Rue de Sèvres in Paris, where he had his collaborators with him, uh, was, was a room without a window that was two, met, two, meters, uh, uh, two meters 28 by two meters 28 by two meters something, uh, a little bit different, the third dimension, and I always forget the third dimension. In essence, it was like a bathroom without a window and at one point, from what I read, he painted the walls of his private room in black. So it was really like a, like a grave. Uh, that's where the, the, the one-eyed Le Corbusier worked, because as you probably know, or I, I said it many times, he lost the sight on his right eye at 28. I don't know exactly what he was doing. Apparently he was painting, but I don't know how come he, he lost his sight completely in his right eye. 
and there is a picture of him with Yanis Xenakis on the in the train station in Brussels, in Bruxelles, in, in uh, Belgium. Uh, the, the very interesting young architect born in Braila, in Romania, who also had one eye. So there is a picture with two architects, Le Corbusier and Yanis Xenakis, who together have only two eyes instead of four. Strange. This is the original. <laughs> This is the original uh, project, uh, you know, probably he got the, you know, the, you know, the, the, you know, the, the signatures, uh, you know, he was allowed to build based on this drawing, incredible. So what you see here in the plan at the bottom is the Mediterranean Sea, number six, number four is his office. Now this is, the square, the, the 60, 16 square meters of Le Cabanon. This is Le Cabanon, number three. Number four is the so-called his office. Now imagine how big is his office if this is 16. Oh, it's about six, seven, uh, six, six square meters. That's what I said, two by three, kind of two by three or 180 by, anyway, extremely small. This is the restaurant, number two. And these are those five units apparently built, you know, kind of by, based on, on his design. We saw this picture with uh, Le Corbusier, Yvonne, uh, his wife, and, uh, and uh, Jean Padovic. There is even a little bit of a mystery apparently related to Le Corbusier's wife. Some, nobody knows, nobody knew where she came from. And uh, some malicious minds, perhaps, uh, they thought that he probably met her in one of those um, Maison de Plaisir. Who knows? It doesn't matter. She was his wife and they are buried together. And they are buried here in, in, this, uh, uh, in the proximity of the Mediterranean Sea. Now, you see the other two lovers, Eileen Gray on the left and Jean Badovic on the right with the significance of the, you know, uh, in fact, it, it, it seems more complicated now than when I, I try to explain. Again, E, Eileen, 10 is the 10th letter, which is J, J from Jean, and then two, the second letter, which is B from Badovic, and seven is the G from Gray. Anyway, <laughs> yes, it looks very, you know, almost mystical and cryptical and complicated. This is the plan of the house. Again, uh, um, it's nice even in terms of, you know, just, just the plans are, are, are nice. And the section um, which we saw and another, this is the side view. And the other two elevations, you know, uh, it's convincing this building through and through. And how delicately is drawn, uh, even almost suggested this, uh, you know, filigrammed, uh, you know, structure of steel and glass at the top. That's, that's, that's where the, the, the spiral uh, uh, staircase is right here in plan. Okay. We move forward, another picture, another picture. Uh, we'll come back to the, to the, because they are kind of in a symbiosis, these two buildings, Le Cabanon and E1027. I think Greg designed everything, you know, and because she was a specialist in, uh, and she liked to, she even wrote, you know, you here is a place for uh, uh, the coats. This is the place for the shoes. This is, uh, you know, she, she, she took care of these things. And we saw this one. Uh, I don't know who the gentleman on the right is. He doesn't look like uh, Jean Badovic, but the one on the left is certainly Le Corbusier. Um, he enjoyed himself there, Le Corbusier, obviously. And who wouldn't, you know? Now, this is the, the so-called three women, uh, but the, I don't know, are they three women or there is a woman and two men or ah, 
he called it, uh, you know, three women, but uh, I see certain details that refer more to something else than three women. Anyway, uh, I read that Eileen Gray was against, uh, you know, this uh, intervention, uh, this alteration as, as, as it was put, but I doubt it because he did it seven years after Eileen Gray uh, left uh, Jean, uh, Jean Badovich. So the house belonged to him. Anyway, I'm not a lawyer and I'm not really interested in this too much, but uh, something is a little bit fishy in this whole story. Maybe he didn't vandalize it at all. He did it with the accord of Jean Badovich. The household was already deserted, as you can see. Doesn't look like a leaf, you know, uh, the, the, the house was abandoned. Anyway, um, an interesting person, uh, Eileen Gray, no doubt, and a very interesting building. And I, I, I think she had a major role here, not Jan Padovic. She probably, she probably consulted with him uh, in, I don't know, some matters. But, but in terms of design, you can tell that it's a different kind of sensitivity. It's a, there is a, a certain feminism in this building. Hello, Jean Badovic. Uh, now, this is the office of Le Corbusier. <laughs> Look at it. You know, <laughs> it's pathetic, it's funny, it's incredible. You know, I mean, there are thousands of mediocre artists in this world you know, maybe tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, who have more luxurious uh, surroundings and who produce nothing. And here we have a man, no doubt, uh, of genius, who pro was producing, he designed the whole of Chandigarh here in this, you know, <laughs> little hut, you know, uh, this, uh, which doesn't even have foundations, you see, it's just Probably four men brought it on the, you know, from on those stairs, you know, from somewhere else and just planted it there. Uh, I, I find it beautiful, actually, really, because we don't need riches in order to produce. That's why I say we don't need, we don't need a lot of things. We can, we, with a pencil and a paper, we can do wonders. And you don't need, uh, you know, uh, Tandy Asen West or East like Frank Lloyd Wright. You can, you, if you are inspired, uh, of course, you look through the window and you see the Mediterranean Sea. This is not a little thing. But you can see beauty even, uh, you know, far away from the Mediterranean Sea. Yes, this is, this is the office of Le Corbusier. And look at his windows. These are windows like in the, any village in Romania, and not just village. I mean, you know, they, they are primal, uh, you know, uh, architectural elements, totally divorced from uh, um, modern ambitions. And I like very much the contradictions of Le Corbusier. A drawing, uh, you know, an initial sketch before he built the Cabanon. And you see the dog laying there and uh, they say that where dog lays down in, in happiness, uh, in, Content uh, means, um, you know, he feels at home there. I guess th this is a letter to his beloved mother. He adored his mother. Um, there are interesting uh, articles about Le Corbusier and his mother. It seems even Ronchamp was built for his mother, whose name was also Marie. So it's Notre Dame du Haut, it's dedicated to Marie. Marie, the mother of Jesus, but also Marie, the mother of Le Corbusier. And uh, I can talk for uh, at least uh, three hours just about this. But I will stop here. Uh, here is, uh, <laughs> you know, the great architect, this time in Paris, I imagine. Um, here he is at, uh, in Le Cabanon. Uh, you see, again, what do you need to be happy? You don't need a lot. Of course, he has the chance to have food delivered to him from the little restaurant. Uh, but uh, <laughs> it's like a kid, you know, in his vacation, drawing the absorbed and uh, with drawings uh, pinned to the, to the wall. And it's fine. This is the building. I love this building. I really do. 
I, uh, I think is uh, one of the most important buildings of the 20th century. This only shows how creative and unconventional he was. I mean, what architect, you know, would, would build something like this for himself? Only a, very, uh, only a revolutionary, really. And a very young man. You know, he said, Le Corbusier, the problem in life is not to remain young, but to become young. And kind of uh, the same thing uh, was, was, uh, was said by Picasso, who said, you know, um, it takes a long time to become young. And I, I agree. I'm beginning to learn that myself. Um, I hope I'll have the chance to become even younger. Anyway, you see the entrance into the restaurant. <laughs> the, uh, what a life. The best. And if it is, if ever was a building that was sustainable, this is it. Now you see wardrobe table, beds, low table, toilet, sink. That's it. And look at the windows. And uh, here you see on the left, uh, Villa by Eileen Gray, and uh, on, on the right, uh, whitish, uh, <laughs> the office of the genius. Here he is, contemplating the sea and thinking of Chandigarh. And here he is again, you know, approaching or around 70, I guess. He died at 78. He kept swimming, you know, uh, it's incredible. He was in good shape, the truth is. Um, something, I don't know if Frank Roy, uh, uh, Kenneth Frampton, but uh, I, I read something that some imagined that he could not have died of a heart attack because he was, um, you know, uh, he died while swimming and something that, something, but you know, this is conspiration of theory that he maybe he committed suicide. Uh, because he was too good of a swimmer to, to die like that, but who knows? He was not so young any longer. I mean, in terms of uh, adding up his, uh, his years. And uh, this return to the basics of life, I think, uh, is, is, is a magnificent uh, invitation to all of us to be very content with what we have and with very little we can be happy on this earth, really. We don't need to go to Mars, Mr. Mars. Please, leave us in peace with your grandiose and, uh, I'm sorry, stupid dreams of, of leaving the earth. Why should we leave the earth? This kind of richness that we have here, it's impossible to have the, you know, uh, we don't, I mean, you know, uh, do I have to mention the oxygen? And, you know, and gravity and the seas and the, and the trees and the vegetation and the stones. Come on, why should we leave the earth? Why? Uh, but we should, have, should take care of the earth, yes, and live very modestly and, 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 and happily in conjunction with nature. And look, he has even small artworks, uh, you know, uh, in the proximity of the, of the window, uh, which he made. And look at the bed, you know, it's all, almost as uncomfortable as the Labitsa that um, Brancusch uh, slept on. It's okay. There is even a mirror, you see, e even this window, simplistic, minimal, minimalist window is an event. It has a mirror uh, on one side of, and when you close it, uh, there are two panels actually, and then you have a this uh, narrow, tall uh, uh, opening on the right through which you, you can see, uh, you know, the, uh, the sea. It's very nice. In other words, happiness can be achievable. And as you can see, even the office, this is the kind of office any one of us could afford, really. Maybe not near the Mediterranean Sea, but there are the interesting places on this earth, really. So we are, we are looking at the little house of the criminal, of the vandal, the one who vandalized the much bigger villa uh, of Eileen Gray and his friend, uh, Jean Badovich. But anyway, it's a, it's, a, it's a story that needs, I think, further investigation. And uh, 
I have to tell you, all the buildings, all the, all the oeuvre of Peter Sumtor to me, together, doesn't value as this small building by uh, the Corbusier. It does. Sorry, Mr. Sumtor, but uh, you are a lesser architect, in my opinion, than, than the one we are talking about here. And even the drawings, you know, because Le Corbusier was right. The drawings do not lie. Even the humblest sketch tells the truth about who you are. And I see, I mean, in even this sketch, I, 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 see, I see great skill and, 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 uh, and um, you know, a complexity at work. It's, it's um, I hesitate to use the word genius, but in, in the case of Le Corbusier, probably we have to use it. It was rebuilt in museums. I mean, there is a, 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 still a rich activity connecting with this building. Hello, Mr. Le Corbusier. Hello. <laughs> yeah, he photographed, I mean, he was photographed there probably after the, the death of his wife, of Yvonne. So that's where he died, in these waters here. Uh, what can we say? At 78, Jean Badovich died at 63, and uh, Eileen Gray died at 90 something, I think over 95. She lived the longest. And, you know, apparently this is what happens women live longer than men. Lucky them, what can we say? Okay, that's it. I'm not going to show you. Uh, this, is, uh, this was an ample uh, presentation about the Corbusier and, uh, and, uh, and uh, Frank Lloyd Wright. So I, I, I did my duty towards Eileen Gray. We are just four people here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, the, 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 the most, uh, was it so boring that the others left? Tell me, what's up? No, Dan, I think it's Sunday night, so people want to relax probably. So uh, this is not relaxing? Mm. <laughs> I don't um, know. I think people might want to have a drink and just like... Mm. What do you think, Ina? This is not relaxing? No, I think it was very interesting, really. A lot of interesting things which I didn't know about Le Corbusier. Uh, do you know Leonie Geisendorf, a Swedish-Polish architect, which was, she has been working with Le Corbusier. No, I don't uh, know. I don't know if you know something about her architecture. She did some really interesting buildings in Stockholm. Now she's over 100 years <laughs> living in Paris. Uh, uh, maybe once uh, I will show some pictures one time. Yes, she's... please. This would be very nice. And you know what? I suggest to do it uh, very soon, so it will be kind of connected with, uh, you know, with this presentation about. Yeah, the... yeah, yeah. I will um, find some pictures about her buildings in Stockholm and show them soon. Mm -hmm. Maybe tomorrow or after tomorrow. I don't know. When, when do you have your next presentation? Uh, tomorrow, of course. <laughs> tomorrow. Ah, you have every evening. Well, uh, I don't. Yeah. Uh, let's see if I. Meant, but maybe on uh, on Tuesday. Sure. So you know, uh, take your time. But I'm very interested because mm -hmm. I do not know anything about her, and it sounds very interesting what you said. Yes, she's an interesting architect. I knew her personally. And uh, then it has been when she filled, when she was 100 here, I don't know if she, she's still living, but some years ago she was still living at 100 and there was a big exhibition at, at the Architecture Museum in Stockholm, a retrospective with her work. So I will show you some interesting buildings by her. Yeah, 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 yeah. On Tuesday evening. Excellent. Please be kind. Uh, could you send me her name because I want to make an announcement? And I am okay. 
I'm going to say that you are going to talk about this mm. architect. I don't have your mail address. Well, I, uh, you know, uh, I'm going to write here on chat my uh, email mm. address, or you write mm. me your email address. Mm. And, uh, I can, uh, yes, I can write it on the chat, yes. Yes, please, please be kind and write it now on the chat, and then you can send me the information after I send you the, the message. Yes, I, I address it to you. So then, come Okay. In a punk. And uh, uh, Vatsal also has uh, an interesting uh, material to show us. I don't know if you want to show it to us today or should we wait for, for when there are a few more people? What do you think, Vatsal? I, I, yeah, I would think that uh, more students would be benefited if they see it. So when students are there, I'll do it. Uh, Okay, so very good. Then, then, well, let's hope because you see, you know, it's Sunday, you know, they need to relax as if this is not relaxing. I think it's very they, relaxing. They how, need come, to have a how, how come, how come I, 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 I find time for this and, 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 and the students don't? I mean, mm -hmm. anyway, I think it's their loss because, he, again, they could have found out something about the uh, you know, uh, Eileen Gray and about Le Corbusier and Le Cabanon and so on. It's really their loss. But, but yes, Vatsal, let's, let's try to do it tomorrow. Then at, uh, at uh, I don't know, I don't know who is born uh, tomorrow. Uh, I have to look on the list. Uh, uh, maybe Vittorio Gregotti, uh, an architect who died because, because of COVID, but he was 90 something uh, in Milan and I don't have yet a, a material about him. I don't mm -hmm. like him so much, but he was a major European architect and I yeah. think tomorrow is his birthday, if I'm not mistaken. So then, uh, I would like to see uh, your presentations on two architects. One is Lebus Woods, because I don't know anything about him. And second is Aldo Rossi. I, I don't know anything about him. So if you have presentations on these two people, I would love to see it. Vatsal, I will send them to you uh, tonight because okay. I, I have both uh, presentations on them. Yes. Great. With, with, with great pleasure. I'll send them when we, we finish here. I'll send them to you. So you sure. said Lebia Suds and Aldo Rossi, right? Aldo Rossi and Adolf Luz. Okay. I have on all three of them. Great. Okay, you can mention other 100 architects. I'll probably have PowerPoint presentations of them. <laughs> in, fact, um, in fact, today you showed Corbusier's uh, office. Uh, that I had not seen before, that project I had not seen before. And uh, I'll add something to this, uh, that when he worked in Ahmedabad, he had an office here. I guess he had an office in Chandigarh also. Uh, like when Louis Khan worked uh, for IIM in Ahmedabad, they had an office here in Ahmedabad. So probably this uh, place in the, uh, in the Mediterranean was where he would uh, go, he would be living and he would call Doshi there and guide him for the project, something like that, maybe. I uh, know, I know, I, I think this was his vacation little hut and right. he liked to work there, of course, because he was not just laying on the bed doing nothing. But I think when he met with other people, he met either in India or in Paris. I, I don't think he invited the, uh, you know, other architects or anything. It was just meant for him and his wife. Because uh, when I worked for someone for three years, he had this habit. He had a farmhouse. Like uh, lots of people in Ahmedabad, they, they own a farm outside the city and they have a small uh, villa there. So my boss used to have a, a, a farmhouse and on Friday night, he would go there. Uh, he would spend the night there, he would live there Saturday, Saturday night and he would return back to the city on Sunday, Sunday afternoon. Uh, so he would call me there on Saturday and we would sit and discuss things over drinks and uh, Ahmedabad is a dry state so all this is illegal like drinking is illegal but uh, we used to do it and uh, for the whole week I had to ask him all the questions there at his, at his uh, farmhouse. Uh, then in the office, he would not meet me. Like in the office, uh, he would meet clients, he would meet contractors. But whatever I had to ask, I had to ask him on Saturday, Saturday afternoon. Right. So, 
So probably that kind of a lifestyle. Yes. Well, you know, uh, to be honest, okay, Dan, what's up? I guess uh, time Pardon? to say bye. Pardon? What did you say? Uh, I guess time to say bye. We are, we only we two are there in the chat. Okay, so tomorrow, if you can be at uh, six, I mean, uh, to I don't know your time, eight p.m. Yeah, eight thirty. Yeah, eight thirty p.m. Um, I don't know how many people will show up because you see, you know, they always find the excuse. It's it's vacation. It's Sunday. It's whatever, you know. <laughs> what can we do? But. A few people will, will show up and uh, yeah. Ina is interesting from Stockholm. She will uh, show something about that uh, architect who built in Stockholm. So it doesn't matter. Ideally, yes, there, will, there should be more people, but what can we do? Do you want to have a preview of the presentation right now? I can share screen and show you if you want to see it. Or just no, a preview. I, no, I, I, no, I would rather want to be, you know, like all the others. So I, I don't okay. want to, you know, see, see twice the same material right. because, right. you know, yeah. I don't want to be surprised just like everybody else. Plus, I great. trust you. I, I'm sure it will be a great presentation. So uh, yeah. we'll, we'll do it. We'll see. We'll find the uh, Vatsal. It's not a yeah. hurry. When we have the largest number of people, yeah. then, then we'll say we begin the evening or whatever it is, the evening with your presentation. So I'm not going to let it for the end because you see people leave. Yeah. <laughs> we'll do it at the beginning. Definitely. And when more students are there, so they, they benefit from it. Right. Uh, right. And I'll wait for your uh, presentations on loose, uh, Aldo Rossi and Lebus Woods. You'll uh, get them in 15 minutes. Oh, great. Thanks a lot, Dan. Okay, Vatsal. Have a nice evening and night. Bye. Good night. Bye. Bye.